Hi everybody, here's a button knot tutorial part 3. In this video I'm going to address the issues that people are having tying the button knot into 764 64th amp steel. So there's a couple parts of tying this knot that I've heard people are having trouble with. So I'm going to use this big rope and show you some tricks to help you get a mental picture of the knot and make it really easy to tie. So remember everything we're doing with this strand we're doing with this strand. So I'm going to start tying the knot. First we loop one strand. So I'm holding this in front of me and I have the strand coming out on top. I'm going to use that strand to loop the other one. And I just looped this strand. So now I'm going to loop this strand. I'm just copying. That's all I'm doing. So now I have each strand has a loop around itself. However, step three is coming up and for step three these two loops that I created, this loop here and this loop here, they're supposed to be chain linked together. So let's just start over. And let's incorporate step three into step two. So step one, loop the strand. Step two, copy what I did back to the other strand. And as I'm doing that, instead of pulling this out and finishing that loop, I can go ahead and do step three, drop this strand through my first loop. And from here I can snug the knot up and do that first snugging part and get everything even to go to my next step. So my, for my next step to make it easy to see what I need to do, I'm going to grab the knot at the bottom, flatten the knot out. I'm going to go behind the knot and pull it up and create a flat uh, presentation. So I'm taking all the strands and making them come up here and lay flat. And by doing so, you can see I can get get a hold of these loops and pull them up flat and now I have a nice visual of what needs to happen next what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something with this strand and do the exact same thing with this strand I'm going to come around the knot and come up through that loop that I got flattened out and the same thing with this strand I'm going to come around the knot and come through that loop that I flattened out if you're having trouble figuring out which one it is Remember, just flatten the knot out. As you flatten the knot out, you'll be able to see those two loops that I'm mentioning right now. It's the two loops that are right here, and the two loops that I'm talking about, they have these free strands laying on top of them. So, what loop is this free strand laying on top of? Oh, it's that one right there. Perfect. So that's where I need to bring this guy around to come through. I'm coming through that loop, and I'm coming through that loop beyond the strand that's laying on top of it. So I believe this is one of the steps the guys are having trouble with. So now I've done the thing I need to do with this strand, and now I have to do something with this strand, the same thing that I did with this strand. Oh, okay, so I'm going to find that loop again. There it is. It's the loop that has this strand laying on top of it. I'm going to come around and come through that loop beyond the strand that is laying on top of it. And so now I'm at the point of the knot where I can snug the knot up. Like I said before, go behind the knot. Go behind the knot where your tape is and flatten the knot out. It's going to give you give your knot a nice presentation so you can figure out what you need to do next. And the next step is the two strands that are at the very top in the center Right here, you just have to open those up and go through the bottom. I'm not going to do that with this one because I think that one, everyone has gotten that one already. So we're just going to move on to tying this with a piece of 764. Okay, here's the 764. We have two colors this time. Hopefully that will help identify the steps of the knot. And 5.5 uh, inches each strand. And the strands need to be controlled right there. I use a piece of tape for that. So to start off, I hold it like this. And I take that one strand and do the first step of looping the blue strand with the white strand. And then I'm doing step two and step three. I'm copying what the white strand just did. I'm coming back and looping it. But I'm also going to grab the interconnecting loop of that one. So I'm coming around the white strand to create that loop. And then as I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and drop this strand 
of the blue. I'm going to drop it through that white loop, and that's going to grab step two and step three for me. Pull the blue strand through the white loop. And then right here, I can just go ahead and snug the knot up. I squeeze the knot kind of like a little gumball in my hand, like this. Like with that big rope, I'm just going to flatten it out. And flattening it out is going to create that visual of my next step. As I flatten it out, I can even get aggressive and pull those two loops. I can, those two loops, those two loops that have the free strands laying on top of them, I can grab those loops and flatten them out like this. And now I got a really awesome visual of, okay, what do I need to do next? I can see, okay, there's the loop where the blue strand needs to come around. And then I'm just going to copy the blue strand. I'm going to take the white strand and come around right there. So creating the flat visual of the knot by squeezing it down with your hand, that's going to let you look at this knot and quickly say, okay, yeah, I can see where I need to go next. And as you're grasping this in your hand, if you grasp at the two free strands, so I'm grasping at the free strand that's blue, I'm grasping at the free strand that's white, I'm, those loops that I'm grasping, those are the loops that are going to accept the strands. So that's the easy way to um, help you figure out this step of where do these strands need to go? They need to go through those loops. So now I'm just gonna use my splicing tool and enter each loop where I know the other the strand needs to go. So now the blue strand needs to come up through here. I'm just going to go through and give the blue strand to the splicing tool and just pull it up. And then if I need to, I can re re uh, get re <laughs> reevaluate my visual, flatten it up again, and look for that loop. And there's that loop. The free strand is laying on top of that loop, so that's where I need to come around with my white one and I can drop the splicing tool in there and give the white strand to the splicing tool and here's the second part where I get to snug everything up it helps to flatten the knot out just like before flatten the knot it gives all the strands a presentation so you can see what you need to do. And from here, the two loops that are in the center, flat, remember, flatten the knot out and you'll quickly be able to see, okay, where's the center of this knot? Oh, it's right there. And here's my white strand and blue strand looping each other in the center. I just need to open up their loop. So for this step, I use a yarning needle the dimensions and part numbers will be in the description, but this yarning needle works perfectly for 764 AM steel. It will open the path up enough that both strands can come through. So just patience and attention to detail to make sure you don't mess the strands up. Create the path. Once you got the yarning needle in there to your satisfaction, then just get it nice and opened up. If you open it up really good the first time, both strands will feed through there. And when the yarning needle is in there, you can even snug up the rest of the knot. Because as long as that channel is open, you're good. Now again, I'm using a latch hook. And I'm just going to grab each strand. And like with the rest of the knot, we're doing the same thing to each strand. Going in through the bottom of the channel I created. Oops. See, I just made a mistake right there. Don't do that. I split the white, the white piece. I don't want to do that. So now is the last part of the tightening of the knot. Once those strands are pulled through, you can either tighten it by hand really good. Just make sure the knot is even because it will tighten up by itself. Or you can use, this is what I use. One of these forceps and now you have a little grab handle so you can lay the knot in your hand it's not going to stretch your fingers out and you can grab each strand 
I pull each strand softly once and then evaluate how the knot looks. And if it looks nice and even, then I go back and pull each strand hard. If at this point the knot is not is not tightening up evenly, just squeeze it. Squeeze it with your hands or flatten it out like that. It'll free up whatever strands are tight in there. And then you can go back and crank down on each strand. Critics of this style of knot in a soft shackle will tell you you need to load this knot up in a hydraulic press or a vise. Um, for hammock suspension, that is not true. It will tighten up by itself beautifully as long as you tie the knot evenly at first. So now that I'm it's tightened up to my satisfaction, the last step is to bury the two strands. You can notice here the tape is pulled down about a quarter inch, telling me that I tightened the knot up pretty evenly. For this step, I'm using a piece of wire. This one is KNS Engineering Music Wire. You can also use a one millimeter wire. I'll just put the link in the description. It doesn't matter which strand goes into which leg. It, it is helpful to bury the strand as close to the base of the knot as possible. That way as the knot tightens up, it will grab your buried strand and evenly tighten the knot up. So there's the white strand buried inside the blue. I'm going to tighten it pulling it with the vice grips. That's optional. As long as it's fully buried in there, you're good to go. Back into the hollow core to grab the final blue strand. Feed the strand to the wire noose, grab the strand, and pull it through. So now we are finished with the knot. That's what it looks like when you use two different colors. Alright, one more time. In case you guys are having trouble with the steps, we're going to do those two difficult steps with some nice big rope. So of course you need your two strands hooked together right here. So remember, step one, we're looping, looping one strand. Step two, coming, to back, coming, coming back and looping the other strand. And then step three is connecting these two together. So as you do step two, just drop that free end through the first loop you created and grab it and pull it snug. And that is that is that difficult step. That's all there is to it. And then for that next difficult step of figuring out how do you wrap these strands around and come up, where do you, how does that all work? Remember, flatten the knot out. Put your hand behind the knot, flatten it out like this. Pull it up all nice and even. You can pinch these two loops. These two loops are where the strands are going next. You can pinch these two loops and pull them out a little bit. And once you do, you'll have a visual of, okay, there's where my strand from the other side needs to come up. And here's where my strand from the other side needs to come up. So I can just wrap around. There's the spot that this one needs to come up. Of course, with 764, so I'm going to use a splicing tool. And then... Now that I have this strand pulled through here, the other side is, is a little confusing because now I kind of lost the visual, so I can just pull this back out though. And I can remember the loop that I have to go through is the loop that the free strand is laying on top of. So I can come around with my strand. Here's my loop that I got to go through. There's my strand that was free. So I'm going to come up beyond that strand and through that loop. And there's that second difficult part of the knot. So hope that guys hope that helps you guys. Let me know what you think about the video. Thanks for watching.